Okay. Hello again. We are moving for uh, the next presentation in this morning session uh, in this third symposium on dating by physical maths applications in archaeology and science. And now we have a pleasure to receive a professor uh, Sanjay Dol. He is a professor of uh, University of Pune in India. Uh, he is head of the Department of Computer Science, director uh, of Alumina Affairs, uh, also in Pune University. He published more than 175 research papers in international reputed journals and 75 proceedings have also been published. Uh, he has several uh, students, uh, PhD, Master of Science, uh, that were obtaining their degree under their, uh, his uh, guidance. He is Senate member of uh, Pune University. Fellow of Maharashtra Academy of Science, Fellow of Indian Acad Academy of uh, Social Science, uh, Mombu Show Fellow in Japan. He received awards, uh, 12 awards at the CRED, out of which two from Government of Maharashtra Literature Award from Premasha Reno and Ashimaj Book. I hope I, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. That's Susanna, that is fine. That is okay. That is fine. So <laughs> it's a pleasure to me here to yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah thank you very much. Uh, you are also doing uh, receiving prizes for science of popularization. That is great. So, yes. Professor uh, Dol, thank you very much for yeah, our yeah. invitation. Yeah. And the, the floor is yours. Okay, so can you see the screen now? No. You stop it to, to share. Yes, you must share it again. Share screen. No, no. click it like in it. share, share no. my screen. No, it's not share, it is there, but. And you select this option, the full screen. You select uh -huh. this, and uh, you. Just, just wait, huh? So now uh, you have down in your screen uh, this share. So you. Yeah, it. yeah. But there is a cancel. Okay, I will do it again. A share screen. Now there is a green share screen, na? Huh? Yes. Uh, don't show these tips again. Share screen. Yeah, this is. So where is the presentation? This is I'm just minute. Huh? I will just Tanishka. Tanishka. You should should put in full screen mode. Tanishka. She's behind you. You you <laughs> we we don't hear you anymore. Oh, some problem with connection. Let's wait, Professor Dol again. Yes, now we can see your screen. Uh he is outside of the domain. Okay, now we can see, Professor. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No full screen. Okay. Yes. 
Yeah. You can put in for screen, please, your presentation. Your presentation. Now you can put your presentation, your PowerPoint. Oh, go, go to PowerPoint. Your for now. Can yeah. you see full screen yeah, mode? Yeah, full screen. Okay. Now you can see, right? Yes, you can see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I will start. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sujana, for a nice introduction, short and sweet, and. Uh, First of all, uh, uh, before I forget, uh, let me thanks the organizers, uh, organizers, uh, especially uh, the professor Sonia Tutami and uh, her entire team, uh, because they have nicely organized uh, this particular symposium on dosimetry by physical methods. And uh, this is very important uh, topic nowadays because uh, the dosimetry is playing important role, not only in geology, archeology, span but also playing very important role in medical, uh, the applications and the medical science as well. So thank you very much. Uh, so now today, uh, I will talk about uh, the nanophosphors for gamma and electron dosimetry. Uh, because now here I will focus on the nanophosphors, but uh, as you might aware about that the phosphors which has already been synthesized in uh, the micro as well as nano forms, and both of them are quite useful uh, for low dose and as well as high dose measurements. Especially high dose measurement uh, is being used very often for the radiation, uh, the environmental radiation dosimetry and the personal dosimetry. But uh, when you really go for the medical applications, for example, uh, the radiation therapy for cancer treatment, then definitely you have to have the um, uh, measurement of low dosimetry. So the it is very challenging for us to develop uh, the dosimetry which measures the dose less than one gray, maybe milligray and microgray up to. So the nanophosphorus is very important. And uh, nowadays, the uh, previously they used to had the microphosphorus, but because of the mode of uh, or the methods of the various synthesis uh, available nowadays, so one can always go for and the synthesis the nanophosphorus for various applications. So today. I will try to focus on the nanophosphors for basically gamma and electron dosimetry. And as you know, uh, that the gamma and electron therapy is being used very often in almost all the country. Uh, and uh, there are maybe a proton and the carbon therapy are coming up, but since they're expensive, uh, it may not be affordable for all the countries. But those countries are quite rich. They can always afford this kind of uh, the accelerators. But almost the gamma and the electron therapy is always there in almost all the country. So uh, the basically, uh, we'll talk about the gamma and the electron dosimetry. Myself, Sanjay Dhole, senior professor from Department of Physics, Savitri Bhai Phule University. So outline of uh, the presentation will be as follows. The, I will talk about the dosimetry and its importance, and it's a basic concept, basically what do you understand by the dose and the dosimetry. Then uh, we'll go for the synthesis method of micro and nanophosphors. And once you have synthesized the micro or nanophosphor, and it will be available for the radiation dosimetry. So these are the radiation sources which are available in our university and which are some of them are indigenously developed and some of them are procured. Uh, so there is six MeV energy electron source that is called restart microphone. This has uh, been indigenously developed in our university and it has been running since last 35 to 40 years or so. And we have also developed low energy, which varies 500 electron hole to 25 kV electron source and high energy electron accelerator and the low energy 
the ions that is called as a ion implanter. Uh, so here the argon or the carbon or oxygen ions can be accelerated. And we have a cobalt 60 gamma source. This is natural radioactive source which is available in our university. And all these sources which have already been used for the development of the uh, dosimetry for various radiations. And then we'll go for the thermoluminescence and the principle because uh, our focus is mainly on the TLDs or TL dosimeters, that is thermoluminescent dosimeters. So now recently uh, we have developed the uh, barium fluoride doped with cerium, gladonium, and ebertium phosphors, and uh, the barium borate doped with uh, the cerium phosphor, and the magnesium borate doped with europium. And these are very excellent. Uh, the nano phosphor, phosphor that we have developed and uh, and the response to the radiation like gamma and electron and sometimes ions and uh, the uh, photons uh, is extremely good and uh, the most of them uh, almost all of them uh, which cover the range right from 1 gray to 10 kilogray or so and then we will conclude uh, with this this particular presentation will conclude with the summary so the objective of uh, this particular work to improve the luminescence characterization of TLD. TLD is nothing but the thermoluminescence, uh, the dosimeters, like the micro and nano phosphors. And the, let us try to understand the TL mechanism and the response of micro and nano phosphors as a radiation dosimeter and the experimental techniques to study trapping parameters of TL glow curve. What we have done is uh, uh, we have also calculated all the theoretical uh, the aspects which required for the dosimeters. So for which uh, some of uh, the formation like Kitty's formula and uh, some other uh, the uh, simulation that we have also done it. Uh, so experimental and the theoretical values can always be uh, the try to match with them and uh, uh, the trapping parameters have been calculated and evaluated. So this is what the experimental techniques to study the trapping parameters of TL glow curve, which is with the help of all the uh, Kitty's formula and so on. So the scope of this particular study was easy method of preparation. And uh, I will let you know how the uh, nanophosphors or the phosphors which can be prepared and uh, can be used and reused again. So measurement of low and high radiation dose with linear response. Uh, these three important things, these are uh, the fading, reusability, and reproducibility is very important as far as the uh, dosimeters like the nanophosphor or the microphosphors are concerned. So radiation dosimetry, uh, this is a picture which uh, shows its uh, own the visualization. So the dose, dose, what we understand by the dosimetry, dose is nothing but the energy which absorbed per unit mass is nothing but the dose. And, uh, the radi and it depends on the type of the radiation, either it is electron, either it is gamma, either it is ion or carbon ion, either it is neutron or any other radiation that we can have. But this radiation which carries energy and deposit energy in the medium. And if certain amount of energy is getting absorbed, per unit mass of a given material is nothing but the dose. So, so therefore, dosimetry is the measure of absorbed radioactive doses. Radioactive is the radiation, which emit the radiation, different kinds of radiation, is a vital tool in the field of radio protection. So here is the person uh, who is carrying TLDs. Uh, this is also uh, the, we can call it as a person monitors or personal dosimeters or pocket dosimeters. So this is what it is called as a personal dosimeter. And uh, here is uh, uh, the person uh, who is actually very close to the radiation source. And if you try to measure uh, the radiation in and around the radiation source, then you should have the proper dosimeters to be measured or pro proper dosimeters to be used for the measurement of the dose. Because if you are very close to the radiation source, then of course the dose level is very, very high. So you should have the very high 
uh, we should have a such dosimeter which can measure very high dose measurement so if you are going away from this source then of course the level of the radiation will be uh, low so that you require the dosimeter which may measure a low dosimeter so this is quite uh, you, you know variation in the development of the dosimeter where uh, it, it it depends it depending on their own respective applications whether where it can be used if it can be used in the medical application then of course uh, the uh, dosimeter should have uh, measure less than 1 gray dose and if it is to be used as an environmental uh, dosimeter then of course it should have more than 1 kg also so this is dosimeter uh, one can have the gamma this is just uh, in a nutshell i am just uh, trying to uh, show that the it can be used for the gamma ray electron thermal neutron and the swift heavy ions or the low energy ions so if you look at the gamma rays the source that we usually use is coba 60 that is a natural radioactive source which gives the dose rate of 60 gray per minute the exposed and the ranges that it, is, it can be used for the medical field because most of the gamma sources which are available for the cancer treatment. So where you can use this kind of a dosimeter and measure the low dosimeter as well as the high level of the dose measurement. And again the environmental field where you can have 0.5 kilogram to 20 kilogram. In case of electron, the 6 mm microton accelerator, so if the flux is 10 for 11 electron per centimeter per second and the ranges uh, it, it can be used for the various application then when you go for the thermal neutron or the fast neutron in uh, some cases the uh, source is californium 252 and the subfluence is or the flux is 10 for 6 neutron per centimeter square per second and the energy which comes around to be a 1025 electron volt that is 25 milli electron volt. and when you go for the swift heavy ion or the low energy ion dosimeters then the ions you can have the carbon because the carbon therapy as i said is coming up so it is challenging for us to develop a very good carbon uh, best uh, dosimeter which can measure the low dose low dose as well as the high dose and you can also have the silver and the nickel and the copper etc because this kind of uh, the ions which can be accelerated and uh, uh, to the very high energy as well as low energy so that you can study the ion dosimetry and there, of course, the fluence which can be varied from very, very low 10 for 10 to 10 for 30. And uh, the energy, as I said, swift heavy ions can be used from 50 MeV to 150 MeV, and the low energy 100 kV to uh, 500 kV also. So these are the uh, TL dosimeters, thermal emission dosimeter. This is a standard one. Okay. There are all the type of because their nomenclature have already been defined TLD 100, TLD. 100H, TLD 100 is a lithium fluoride and this is a sensitivity, sensitivity to cobalt 60 relative to LIF is 1. So these are all the standard dosimeters which are available nowadays and uh, which has already been commercially available. But uh, if you look at, at their dose ranges, for example, TLD 100 that is lithium fluoride, which is very popular one, which can go for 10 micro gray to 10 gray. But really, uh, if you think that it can be used in uh, the medical application because where you need to have uh, the dose measurement less than one gray and this is good enough. So if you go for TLD 100H, which is lithium fluoride doped with magnesium, copper and the phosphor, then you can have 10 microgate to 10 gray again. So it's a relative sensitivity is one as compared to the cobalt 60 and the LIF. Okay. So as far as the last one is TLT 900 because uh, first of all, because why lithium 400 because which was uh, 100 is, uh, is it's nothing but the uh, number which is given as far as their annealing temperature and other things are concerned. So that the TLT 900 is calcium phosphate doped with disposium which relative sensitivity is 20 as compared to the lithium fluoride and it can go up to 100 micro gray. To 100 gray and their fading rate is also given on an average fading rate if you will see that it comes around to be fine five percent per year and that is extremely good and all of them are uh, you know required the uh, z effective 
because your tissue is uh, uh, you know uh, if you look at it, the tissue or adipose then it contains most of the water and the water has z effective is 7.4 so all of them are closed except this tld200 and tld400 that is calcium fluoride desfusium and calcium manganese is 16.3 other they are very close to the tissue equivalence that is 8.2 so when you really work for the tissue equivalent then definitely those dosimeter can be useful for the medical application and some other maybe environmental and the personal dosimeter these are some other uh, dosimeter which has already been developed by us and some other people in the uh, laboratory now synthesis methods for micro and the nanophosphors now we'll go one step by step now uh, the uh, there are two methods which are very important. One is uh, the chemical co-precipitation method and other one is hydrothermal method. Uh, these two methods are very important as far as the nanophosphor synthesis are concerned. So uh, we'll discuss more in detail. Uh, so by using chemical co-precipitation method, this is a reaction to be because uh, we're going to synthesis the barium uh, fluoride. You take a barium chloride, and uh, take one mole percent of uh, this uh, cerium oxide mixed with the barium chloride and then plus the ammonium uh, the trifluoride uh, okay so uh, when you actually uh, dissolve them so and the steer and then you can have this kind of a product so you will get the barium fluoride doped with cerium cerium which has a one mole percent so if you take the appropriate amount of barium chloride and the ammonium chloride and the cerium oxide and ethanol are taken off in, uh, the analytical reagent grade of AR grade and these are the you know uh, the uh, the things the uh, the 5.71 gram of the barium chloride is to be dissolved in 30 ml double distilled water add one mole percent of cerium oxide and again add 1.74 gram of the uh, ammonium fluoride and dissolve them into 20 ml double distilled water. Then you can have mixed all together. The same solution is then stoichiometrically mixed with uh, the ammonium fluoride solution and drop wise till the precipitate completes. And then you can have the nano crystalline uh, the, uh, of the phases that you will get of uh, the barium fluoride doped with cerium, which has finally got it after the five hours at 120 degrees centigrade if you look at it into this uh, particular diagram or the schematic diagram where we have taken in this particular beaker the first solution which is barium chloride mixed with the serum oxide one mole percent which is which acts as a dopant and the second solution is the ammonium fluoride uh, and then uh, the Take the drop wise from the uh, second solution and put it into the first solution and then stir them and uh, then filter out then you can have the phosphor material so this is all the setup of uh, uh, the chemical co-precipitation method and the synthesis of the phosphor uh, the barium uh, fluoride and this is what the residual that you can get it uh, after this particular method the second one is again the hydrothermal method where you can have the micro, uh, the magnesium borate doped with europium. Here, magnesium oxide and the boric acid, and that is under one mole percent of European oxide because European oxide is acts as a dopant and mix it with the magnesium oxide, and all them put into uh, the distilled water and are dissolved. Mix all the chemical and stir it. Take all the solvent into Teflon linear autoclave. This is the autoclave. And heat that autoclave at 1 degree centigrade for 12 hours. And wash them timely. And microcrystalline of the magnesium borate doped with europium has been finally prepared by heating the uh, wet powder of 5 hours at 120 degree centigrade. So this particular magnesium borate uh, which has been formed uh, through this hydrothermal method. This is also one of the very important method 
and very easy method of preparation or the synthesis of uh, the uh, nanophosphor or the nanomaterials for the dosimeters. And uh, here in the, this is the setup of uh, the hydrothermal method where the water basically acts as a pressure transmitting medium and the control vapor pressure and temperature of water may vary morphology of the matter. If you control the pressure of the water, so the morphology of this particular nanophosphorus can be changed. So radiation sources, so after synthesis and once we have uh, the developed the uh, nanophosphorus, then the nanophosphorus should be exposed with some radiation. Radiation either it is gamma radiation, electron, either it is high or low energy electron or the, uh, the ions, either it is swift heavy ions or the cobalt 60 gamma radiation. So these are the first one, one to six mu electron accelerator called microtron, low energy and swift heavy ion beams, 15 UD electron accelerator and the cobalt 60 gamma source. So uh, this is one to six mu in the respect microtron. Uh, this is in-house facility that we have in the department. And uh, we have almost all the facilities, radiation facilities. So uh, this is what we have uh, the advantage that uh, the, once we synthesize, we can go for the radiation and the expose with a certain dose and the measure the TLDs and uh, they try to see the, at what dose it can go up. So this is what uh, the good that we're having all kinds of the radiation facilities with us. So I will not go into all those details, but uh, uh, this is a schematic view of the restart microphone from where this is extracted from where the, you can take out the beam. So the, you can vary the beam energy right from one to six MeV. Now this is set for six MeV. So the beam current is 10 milliampere and the beam current average is 0.1 microampere and the maximum pulse rate because this is a pulsating uh, the uh, beam. So it is 50 pulses per second and it can be varied. So this is a control console and this is a top view of the microtron. And so here, uh, this is, uh, there is an extractor here and where we can put our sample and expose with the one or six MeV electron radiation. So this is a low energy electron beam facility also uh, developed engineers indigenously in the department. This is a triotetrotype electron gun from where you can have the electron beam coming over here and fall on the Faraday cup. So this is a setup and you can have the beam of different sizes. If you change the uh, voltage at the anode, then you can have the different size of the beam. So you can have the four centimeter, you can have six centimeter, you can have 13 centimeter. So you have a large or many number of uh, uh, the nanophosphors you can put together and expose with the low energy electron. And as I said, the energy which can be varied from for the 500 electron hole to 25 kV electron. This is a specification, the electron, the energy as, as said, adjustable from 500 electron to 20 kV. Current, the current can go up to 0.1 nanoampere to 50 microampere. The spot size is, as I said, uh, it can be read from 3 millimeter to 150 millimeter or so. And uh, the beam uniformity, energy stability is very high. The beam uniformity is within 10%. This is quite acceptable. So even if you have a very large beam, so you can put at the corner, so it will receive the same dose, uh, the uh, sample which is kept at the center. So there is the variation may be 10% and that is quite acceptable as far well as the dose is concerned. So this is 15 UD electron accelerator, which is available uh, in uh, the Inter University Accelerator Center, Delhi, New Delhi. So uh, here there is an ion source, and this is a tank where the acceleration takes place. So you can have a negative ion from the ion source. This is the RF ion source initially, and which can accelerate up to 15 mega hold. Then there is a steeper charge steeper made up of carbon, and then which is very thin. So this interact with this and which transfer its charge, and this becomes ions. And again, it accelerate, it becomes 30 MeV. And this ion set goes into the uh, magnetic analyzer and the measure energy and go into the different energy, different beams lines. So one of the beam line is dedicated to the material science where this kind of uh, the work can be carried out. This is the sample holder. You can keep your nanophosphor for the ion irradiation various at a time. 
So at a time you can put it uh, the more than 20 sample together because in four way and you can rotate. So this kind of a holder can be uh, operated in the vacuum. So uh, uh, the vacuum which can be meant around 10 power minus 6 torr and uh, uh, everything is controlled from the control console. So this is Koba sister gamma source which is available on the campus. Uh, it is with us only. And uh, as you know that suppose if uh, you see the uh, decay scheme of Koba 60, then it decays beta and then subsequently uh, the excite from this level to this level. And then there are two gammas which are coming out of it. That is 1.17 MeV and 1.33 MeV. Dose rate of this particular source, gamma source is 60 gray per minute. So that uh, these are all these radiation sources which are available with us and uh, uh, quite often that we use it. So uh, there is a conversion factor which is available because uh, uh, electron, if you go for the electron irradiation or the ion irradiation, then you can always uh, go for the fluence, uh, measure the fluence. But if it is to be converted, electron dose is to be converted into the dose or the gray or rad, then uh, definitely this particular formula, that is dose 1.6 into 10 power minus 10, multiply by phi, phi is the fluence, 1 by rho, rho is the density, this is a stopping power, okay. So stopping power for electron which can be calculated for a given uh, nanophosphorus or the given material. So if you put that value, put the fluence, then you will get the dose, okay. So for example, the fluence is 10 power 14, then the corresponding is 2.87 and if you have 4 into 10 power 15, it is 114.85 kilogram. So this is the conversion factor being used very often when you are working with the electron. Even in ion case, that can also be possible to calculate. Now, uh, coming to the luminescence, the Latin word is means light. The emission of light when the substance is extremely stimulated, externally stimulated by some kind of energy like heat, light, electric field, electrons, ions and magnetic field, etc. So there are the many types like thermoluminescence, Photoluminescence, electroluminescence, cathode luminescence, solar luminescence, and magneto, where the luminescence that you can obtain because of the thermal by providing the heat here by bombarding the photons, here by bombarding the electrons, or uh, the uh, if you pass the electric and the cathode luminescence by bombarding the electrons on the cathodes, you get the luminescence. Sonoluminescence sono means uh, you get the sound waves, and here is the um, uh, the magnetoluminescence is because of the magnetic field. So out of which we are trying to focus on the thermoluminescence. So uh, there are actually two types, the fluorescence and the phosphorescence on the basis of this luminescence is going to be defined and you can have this kind of a different types of this. So what is luminescence? It has been classified in the two ways, the fluorescence and the phosphorescence. Fluorescence, as you know, as you know, it is spontaneous emission of light. Okay, so when you have a you switch on the source and put on this, then you can have excitation and de excitation. You get the photon. But as soon as you switch off your input source, then there will be no radiation which will be coming out of it. So because lifetime typical lifetime for this is ten nanoseconds, so decay time is independent on the temperature. This is usually this is fluorescence. Fluorescence is typical lifetime is 10 microsecond and it is independent on temperature. But phosphorescence is uh, where you can have the intermediate states like the metastable states or we can call it as a trapping states because some of the electrons are getting trapped here. When you put on the source, there is the excitation and while the excitation will get the light. Okay, that is fine. But when you switch off the input source, there is no radiation should come out of it. But because of the thermal energy, some of the, the, the electrons going into the excited state, going into the conduction band, and while going with this stays there for a certain time, that is 10 power minus 8 second, and they de excite. So typical lifetime, lifetime of this phosphorescence is milliseconds to seconds or days. So this is this comes for the last long. Okay. So phosphors are generally inorganic solids like insulators or semiconductors having large band gap. 
and the energy states within band gap are created by doping impurity thermal emissions so uh, importance of thermal emissions very high tl sensitivity to ionizing radiation uh, even if you give a very small amount of dose it can sense this is what uh, the tl sensitivity so a simple glow curve structure ideally single glow peak easy preparation method and has chemical stability and intense to extreme climate variations a linear response in a wide range of radiation dose and uh, it can be reusability the glow curve structure should not change not repeatedly uses tissue equivalence and toughness non toxicity and easy handling this is what the importance of the thermal emissions okay so that is why we go for the development of nanophosphors or uh, the, the different tlds what is the mechanism and how will you get the glow curve because uh, slowly we are going step by step towards the glow curve glow curve glow curve where we can measure the dose in the stage 1 where you have a the, the uh, nano phosphor or the phosphor micro phosphor then it has a valence band and the conduction band there is in between there is a forbidden gap so when you have a doping for example uh, the uh, now will be taking three of example for uh, the explanation of this kind of a mechanism then uh, there are if you have a doping like cerium the europium or dysphosium in that particular uh, the matrix then you can have this kind of a generation of the levels in between the forbidden gap these are also called as a trapping centers which may some of them are very close to the conduction band and some of them are away from the very deep level so those who are very close to the conduction band may easily uh, they trap and retrap again Uh, detrapped again uh, so that very small amount of energy is required to go into the conduction band that is what it is called as a solo trap so they end it immediately so when you put the radiation either it is electron gamma ion or any other radiation then if you excite if you put the energy from the radiation then energy of uh, the electron is getting excited and then trapped by these centers almost all this suppose uh, if you have a one gray uh, how will you define the one gray one gray is uh, uh, nothing but uh, the uh, 100 rad and one rad is nothing but 100 ergs per unit gram is nothing but one rad so when 100 ergs of energy from the radiation is getting absorbed in the form of excitation of electron in the conduction band and subsequent all those electrons are getting trapped so all those so that one gray of uh the dose is getting absorbed in this particular uh, dosimeter or in particular nano phosphor so now this phosphor is ready it is irradiated one so this irradiated one now we have to read out we have to see how much dose is getting absorbed because we are exposed with a certain amount of dose and get, getting all, all, almost those electrons are excited getting trapped over here and now when you heat it this all those trapped electrons get sufficient energy because uh, if you take the thermal energy is 0.025 electron volt and if you go uh, if you heat it more than the 300 degree kelvin that is 400 500 degree kelvin then definitely the energy is more than 0.025 electron volt so all the deep level uh, if you start from so the electron will be detrapped going into the conduction band we stay for a certain amount of time and de excite by de excitation then then uh, that gives a light okay this give it a photon so when you have a lower temperature so very shallow trap which will be going and increasing the light you have here the maximum temperature where you will have the maximum intensity of this particular photon which is coming out of it and as you go on increasing the temperature further the very deep level but the deep level uh the impurity is very very small in number so that it can come down so this is it is a perfect gaussian so this is what it is called as a dosimetric peak and this dosimetric area under the curve of this particular dosimetric peak is nothing but the dose which is being received by that particular sam sample and this is what the dose measurement can be done uh, so when you expose suppose if you go expose with a 2 gray or 3 gray so this peak will increase okay if it is 10 gray 
then this will be universal. So this intensity of this particular glow curve will go on increasing as you go on increasing the uh, dose of the uh, radiation, either it is electron, either it is gamma, or either it is any way. Okay, so, so this is importance of this. So this is a conduction band. These are trapping levels. This is a hole trap. This is an electron trap. This is a direct band. Again, this is a band to band. So this is the first one. This is the exposure. Uh, this is a tear or a soil phosphor. We are exposed. This is the storage. So this is storage. Now we were going for uh, reading the dose. So this is uh, the, when you heat this particular nano phosphor, then the radiation which are coming out that can be the uh, TLD reader will read out and you can have this is a mechanism where from this de excitation then you get the photon. So this is the, uh, the simulation. This is going into the conduction band and uh, from where it is going into the recombination center and then you can have the radiation which is coming out. That is what it is called it, the thermal stimulation. So you can have, uh, when you have uh, increased the temperature more than the 300 degree Kelvin. So the energy of uh, the electron, uh, the energy of the electron is more than the 0.025 to 5 electron hole. Then they take uh, the transition from this level to this level, conduction band. This stays for some time here and going into the recombination center and while going into the recombination center, this gives off the photon and this is what it is called the TL combination. So this is again the same thing. Uh, you have a TL and OCL trap over here. You have a PL, you have a TL all together. This is a conduction band. So measurement process of thermoluminescence, the TLD sample, irradiation of electron, gamma, neutron, this is low electron ion and swift heavy ions. This is storage. So energy which can be released here and the thermal emissions. And the, again, you can anneal that particular cement and reuse, reuse again. So TLDs which can be used initially, measure the dose and again annealed out. All those traps can be detrapped and made it available for the measurement of the another set of radiation. So the same TLD can be used for the uh, it can be reused. Uh, now, once you synthesize uh, uh, the uh, nanophosphors, then first uh, the characterization that is to be performed is the structural, uh, to know the structure and the morphology. So the structure that we can, uh, we can come to know uh, through the XRD, through the X-ray diffraction. So uh, here, uh, this is the barium uh, fluoride doped with cerium, gadonium, and abertium. And th this is for the, that we are using this particular system for the gamma dosimetry. Professor, so this structure, Professor, uh, five, five minutes, okay? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. I will try to finish. Yeah. You, you give it 10 minutes, madam. Huh? Yeah. So this is structure. And uh, uh, this is XRD pattern shows that the nanoparticle, this is a cubic structure, and this is a morphology. And uh, this is EDS pattern which shows the uh, elemental analysis from where you can confirm that there is a uh, fluorine, there is a uh, barium, there is cerium, and then accordingly percent. This is a glow optimization curve. Uh, this is first of all what we do is uh, uh, first of all that particular phosphor which was irradiated for one kilogram and uh, took the uh, glow curve and optimized accordingly by, ch by changing the annealing temperature. And we found that uh, the, we have very good glow curve for at 500 degrees centigrade. That we have taken and then irradiated right from 1 gray to 25 kilo gray. And then we have very good response which comes from 1 gray to 25 kilo gray. See, so this particular uh, barium fluoride doped with abertium uh, is useful uh, for the measurement of low dose as well as uh, the higher dose. The same thing with uh, the barium fluoride doped with gladonium. Uh, you can have this particular uh, the D. D is a 500 degree centigrade. This is a glow, fine glow. Uh, this other, uh, all are the shallow traps, the shallow curves. 
so that they disappeared as you go on increasing the temperature but only this remained so when we select uh, this d uh, and uh, the irradiated with uh, right from 330 gray to 25 kg gray then uh, the and observe the glow curve as you go on increasing the the dose of the gamma radiation then the intensity of this glow curve is going to be increased and then the tl counts versus dose is linear and it is observed at 30 gray to 25 kilo gray uh, so this is fading and reproducibility this is very uh, the fantastic study which has been carried out uh, that is for barium fluoride uh, here uh, it is 10% is the uh, fading and reproducibility can be done for the five cycle we have done it for five cycle and it is quite good often and uh, for barium fluoride uh, doped with gadolinium is 9.5% and number of and this is uh, again you can have a very good reproducibility this is for barium fluoride uh, doped with cerium and uh, again uh, here we have changed the concentration we observe that this 1% is very good then we annealed it and then uh, annealing temperature that goes up to uh, this is uh, two hours and then this is the d 500 degree centigrade is a very fantastic glow curve that we could observe and uh, as you uh, can irradiate right from 1 gray to 15 gray kilo gray then as you go on it is in this dose of the gamma radiation then intensity of this uh, glow curve is to be observed so again the it can be used for 1 gray to 3 kilo gray see uh, all of them can be used uh, almost for 1 uh, gray to 3 kilo gray and uh, you can have Uh, the fading 3.7 uh, 34 percent and the again reproducibility can be obtained very nicely this is a glow curve uh, the we, we can have uh, the maximum temperature order of kinetics depth trap depth and frequency factors and figure of merit the figure of merit for this is 1.7 uh, percent if the figure of merit for the nanophosphor is less than 2 percent this is always good and this is a frequency factor and this is kitty's formula which has been used for the calculation theoretical calculation of all these factors and this has been decontaminated uh, so this is result barium uh, fluoride doped with cerium is one of the good candidate which can measure 1 gray to 3 kilo kilo gray and uh, 7.4% is the fading and this is quite acceptable Uh, another one is uh, tmt stop analysis and dosimetric properties of serum dope and barium uh, the uh, borate phosphor uh, so this is orthorhombic the monoclonic structure and uh, uh, when you really go for the photoluminescence you observe that the it emits the blue light this is the blue light having wavelength 450 nanometer or so so uh, again uh, uh, their concentration which was varied so we observed that uh, the uh, this mole uh, percent two mole percent is good enough and we have taken this one and uh, increase the temperature and there the two glow curve that we could observe and then uh, the uh, linear curve this is uh, the response curve that shows right from 1 gray to 4 kg gray for the gamma dose and there of course fading response for 1 kg array is uh, uh, quite less than 10% and see the, the reproducibility is quite good even if you do the experiment quite often after one or two days the uh, you uh, the fading is less as well as the reproduci reproducibility can be maintained so there is a tmt stop uh, the analysis find trapping for the parameters for of tl glow curve tmt stop uh, basically this is very important technique where uh, you can uh, the calculate the energy of the trapping levers so there are 0.9 electron hole 1.1 electron hole 1.5 electron 1.7 which is comparable with the theoretical one see this is a trap depth which has been calculated by gcd okay this is a kitty's formula and uh, this is quite comparable so tmt stop where the for certain duration that 2 minute after 3 4 minute or 6 minute you can have the glow curve and then you can plot the uh, for a different temperature 
for different temperature, TL intensity versus different temperature. There are many TL glow curves that have been taken and then TMT stuff which was uh, put in. So uh, this is uh, the uh, barium uh, borate doped with cerium phosphor for electron dosimetry. Again, uh, uh, the uh, I will just let you know the response curve where you can have the fluence level 10 power 12 to 10 power 14 electron per centimeter square. This is quite linear. And further, as you go on increasing the fluence, it goes to saturation. And uh, this is again the fading is less than 10 percent, see 9.5. The, if the fading of the nanophosphor of the material is less than 10 percent, that is quite acceptable. And this is again theoretical trapping parameters, which has already been evaluated. The depth parameter, which is comparable with the TMT stock, which has been calculated experimentally. This. So this is conclusion uh, in the barium uh, phosphor, the borate doped with cerium the 2 percent for gamma. Uh, it gives 1 gray to 4 kilo gray and the fading is 8%. This is fantastic result which we have, we could obtain. And for 6 mm electron, it is uh, the peak positions, but uh, you can vary from 5 to 10 power 12 to into 10 power uh, 14 electron per centimeter. So you can always convert and that goes up to 1 kilo gray also. But again, if you see that the fading is less than 9.5%. Okay. So uh, this we could publish in Journal of Alloys and the Compounds. And uh, this is last one. The, we could also perform experiment for iron uh, dosimetry. These are all uh, for uh, the magnesium borate doped with europium for a swift heavy iron, gamma and tin. I will just let you know uh, the response, linearity glow curve response for uh, 10 into 10 power 12 to 10 power 12 ions per centimeter square for uh, the silver ion having charge state 7 plus and nickel ion having charge plus 7 plus. See, the linearity is quite maintained, but the uh, fading is 10 percent and uh, for 100 even nickel is 12 percent. This is not that good one. But uh, for gamma rays, again, the dose which can be varied from response curve that 1 gray to 4 kilo gray and the TMT stock. All these levels can be calculated and compared with the theoretical one, and it is quite comparable. And this is the convoluted one. Uh, and uh, this is the experiment that we could perform for 10 mv photon and 15 mv photon from the medical accelerator, where we could get the uh, linear glow curve from 10 centigrade to 10 gray. See uh, that this is uh, uh, the material that we could develop can give you the uh, 10 centigrade to 10 gray. And this kind of uh, the nanophosphor can effectively be used for the cancer treatment, where maximum, where the maximum dose which can be delivered to the tumor for one set is uh, only uh, the one gray or two gray. And uh, this, and the total dose, dose which, to, which is to be received, uh, maybe more than uh, 30 gray or so. So in conclusion, the material that we could uh, develop here, the magnesium borate doped with europium that we have taken 1%, sweet heavy iron that is 10% fading, okay, and for cobalt 60 it is 8% fading, but the dose range is, range is 1 gray to 4 kilogray, and this 10 mu and 15 mu photon, these photons are being used for the cancer treatment where you can measure the dose uh, using this particular phosphor is 10 centigrade to 10 gray and the fading is still uh, less than the 10 percent that is 9.5 percent. So summary, synthesis methods such as chemical coefficients and solid state diffusion have been used to prepare micro and nanophosphors. Various phosphor that we could develop that is three make a, three uh, system that we could develop uh, uh, and which can measure right from 0.1 gray to uh, 4 uh, kilogray or, or 10 kilogray or so, that is barium fluoride doped with cerium, gladonium, abrutium, and barium borate doped with cerium, and magnesium borate with, doped with europium have been studied. Tear techniques have been used for the dosimetric purpose, and electron, gamma, and swift ions have been measured using this particular system. So, this is our research group. Professor Boraskar is the adjunct professor and distinguished professor. Uh, Dr. Dahiwale is assistant professor, and this is our research group. 
there are almost more than 20 students are working right now uh, and uh, almost uh, some of uh, them are associated with us and uh, uh, this is a collaborator from BRC but uh, MS Kulkarani, uh, Dr. Mute from BRC and Professor Devashish Sen Gupta, IIT uh, the Kharagpur, India. Now uh, you might have heard this uh, talk before me and uh, is uh, doing excellent work uh, as far as the uh, ge geology is concerned. So uh, we have other contributors, as I said, the Mahesh Badane, Priti Kulkade, and the Kishore Gawani is the student, and the, all of them are involved in developing this particular uh, nano phosphorus. Okay. So with these few slides, uh, so let me thank once again, once again, the organizers, especially uh, uh, Professor. Uh, Sunia Tutami and uh, the Professor Susanna and many others uh, who have uh, directly involved and or indirectly involved in this organizing committee. Thank you very much and thank you all. So, thank you, Professor Dawn. Yeah. It was a very nice presentation, a lot of uh, interesting results. Even for my group, I'm working with uh, OSL in magnesium tetraborate also. So yeah, very think. good, very good. Yeah. <laughs> but we have uh, very, uh, a very excellent result that we could uh, obtain because I hope that it can be used for the cancer treatment. Yes. Because where, where, where we have to give dose less than one gray. Yes. yes. Maybe milligray or microgray sometimes, you know. Uh, we have some questions from the audience. Uh, I will try to do very quick because we are already yes, the yes, next yes, one. Yes, yes. Let me see from Professor Jorge Polymeris. Uh, let us denote with EM the activation energy of uh, the trap in the macro scale and EN in the nano scale. Have you studied whether these two values are the same? Uh, which one? Uh, micro and uh, nano phosphorus, right? Yeah. If, uh, he's, ah, he started before. I have one question. Assuming one dosimeter with ah, well ah. defined a single TL peak in micro scale and nano scale. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. I will just answer within one minute or so. Uh, he wants to ask that whether if you have a micro scale system and the nano scale system. But even if it's a micro scale and the nano scale system, if you read it with the gamma radiation, they will create a traffic centers or it is doped with some other dopant. And uh, then that dopant um, may have certain energy. Either it is a micro scale or the nano scale doesn't matter. But TMT stop is one of the fantastic uh, uh, the technique where you can use it for both the purpose, both, even in the micro scale or the nano scale. And you can resolve, you can experimentally measure the uh, the excitation energies. And that can be compared with the GCD model. Yes. Thank you. So and that can be done. From, do from Dr. Pedro Guzzo, could you comment about the effect of the uh, dose rate of gammas on your phosphors? Yeah, yeah. Dose rate means uh, uh, the uh, by changing the dose rate, first of all, that by keeping uh, this uh, dose rate, for example, uh, you have 60 or 50 gray per minute, okay, and you have changed the time. Dose is fixed, but you have changed the time that is one hour, two or three hours. But now, if you change the dose rate, Again, dose rate and change the time, dose rate and this, if you plot a graph, then certainly there is a change in the, because uh, the, during the, the dose rate effect, only the annihilation, annealing takes place. And this annealing of the trap itself gives us some uh, sort of different, uh, the uh, results. So when you have, a, this is what it is called the dose rate effect on the nanophosphor. And this is, of course, it is, uh, there because during the dose rate effect, the annealing uh, takes place. Okay. Uh, I have one question, short question, just because this is an event about uh, archaeological dating in this area. Uh -huh. uh, would, would you recommend one of these uh, materials for dosimetry in archaeological dating or uh, 
would you recommend another type? Which one do you think is more? No, no. For for dating, uh, the first one that uh, uh, the I uh, there are three of them. Only last one that I will not uh, uh, recommend uh, because that is only giving a very small dose. Uh, that is uh, the uh, ten centigrade to ten gray. But there are the, some other two systems that we have developed. Uh, the barium uh, fluoride doped with cerium, gladodium, and abatium. That we, that is quite uh, useful as far as the dating is concerned because that varies from one gray to uh, very large uh, the level of the radiation. Uh, that is, it goes up to four kilogram or sometimes ten kilogram also. So this is what the linear range that you have. So for dating purpose, this is good enough. But if you ask me the medical application of the cancer treatment, then the last one uh, mm -hmm. will be the uh, good candidate for it. Okay. Okay. Book. Okay, we are having very good collaboration with uh, uh, Professor uh, Dev, uh, Devashish Sen Gupta. Okay. So we used to give him uh, the uh, this kind of a TLDs when we have developed when we develop. And uh, he used to do, uh, he, he tried to perform some of the experiment on the geological uh, the platforms or geological some field work. Uh, so this, and we're getting very good results, of course. Thank you so much, Professor. It was very yeah. interesting. A lot of uh, uh, people here saying that uh, thank you, very good presentation. Thank ah, you very yeah. much. So, compliments thank for your presentation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank uh, you very much, madam. Uh, sorry should... for uh, I, I, I could not finish within time. No, <laughs> like, no, it's okay. Uh, yeah, we yeah. started the late also. Uh, uh -huh. So, now we should stop to continue with the next uh, one, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the comments is already the, the link for YouTube presentation. So please, people, move us to the next one uh, presentation with uh, Professor Jorge Polimeris. Thank you, Professor Dole. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor.